Yes, sir. We're officially back at it. This is Bug Nice coming at you with the Marvel Legends Age of Apocalypse series deluxe apocalypse figure review. Let's do it. This ain't for no scalper. You a scalper? Then fuck out shit. This one for them real collectors. That's army building and posing figures. Marvel Legends. Imports. Many make the I'm fucking with. High beast we know about. You. Stay buying figs. Don't and a quick look at the artwork on the side of the box. It is the same on both sides. All right, let's get this bad boy open and see what's what. All right, here we go. In Sabanor, AKA Apocalypse, the age of Apocalypse, Apocalypse. His bio on the back of the package reads, Apocalypse launches an offensive against humankind in pursuit of a world where mutants rule and only the strong survive. So yeah, Age of Apocalypse was launched in 1995, if I'm not mistaken. It was sort of like one of these alternate reality, apocalyptic futures, if you will. And in this reality, Apocalypse pretty much won. He's the head honcho, Professor X is dead. In this reality, Magneto is the leader of the X-Men and they are the rebellion. Some of the good guys from the 616 universe are bad guys and vice versa. Apocalypse has some really powerful, crazy lieutenants like Dark Beast and Sugar Man. If you didn't check out any of my reviews from the Sugar Man Builder Figure Wave, you should go back and check them out. I pretty much go through the story in detail as I go through each review of those regular figures in the wave leading up to Sugar Man. So we have a deluxe apocalypse figure, pretty much build a figure style, build a figure size in one package with a couple of accessories. He does look very good, although I have complained in the past about some of the artwork for the Age of Apocalypse storyline which I really didn't enjoy too much but the story was actually good so you should probably go back and read it because I do anticipate that we will get another full wave of Age of Apocalypse maybe two I think they're gonna try to round out a lot of the characters with some of the really cool costume designs like Cyclops and Havoc and you know it's quite a few people that we're missing but yeah like I said I thought that some of the character designs and some of the art looked a little goofy but I do think that this figure is really nice I do like the way this guy came out out of the package he comes with the smiling face or laughing or whatever the heck he's, he's doing there he seems ecstatic and he's got a fist on the right arm and an open hand on the left and you saw a few minutes ago how the the cape looked I'll give you another look at that now I do like the folds and what have you here and this is good for something static something vanilla but like I mentioned a few days ago I saw my boy Michael Wisman do uh, a cloth cape which looks really good and some pictures you can see that uh, his cloak or his cape looks blue and in some it looks kind of purple I see my man Mike did a purple cape um, so I'd be interested in, in fitting him with something cloth and something that has some bendy wire just for more dramatic effect but yeah, it is a closer look at that head sculpt, which I think looks really good. I do believe you are able to fit this head onto the Apocalypse Builder figure from last year. I guess that was last year. So I'll try that swap, although I know the colors won't quite match up. But there's quite a few separate pieces here. Obviously, the head pops off, and this little collar can pop off, and... These shoulder pads pop off. They actually kind of hinge up and down a little and the cloak can be removed as well. And there's a look at almost the bare body. The hands pop off. So I'm sure there's an option to swap these hands onto the Apocalypse Builder figure and the gauntlets are removable as well. So there's an idea of how the bare body sort of looks. Maybe there's some ideas brewing in your mind of what they may use this body for in the future. But let's take a quick look at the articulation on this buck before I go ahead and give you a look at the accessories. You saw that his head was on a ball joint so he can look up pretty far without the collar and cape and everything on left to right he gets some pivot decent articulation on the head shoulders on a ball joint they're gonna come up just about that far you can do a full 360 there is an upper bicep swivel there is a single jointed elbow that is greatly hindered by the gauntlet here. So it's barely 90 degrees. There's a swivel and a hinge on the wrist. There is ab articulation going forward and you get a couple clicks going back. You do get waist articulation, T-joint at the pelvis. Legs gonna come up just about that far. You do get a decent split. You can see that barbell joint inside of there. There is an upper thigh swivel. There is a double jointed knee. There is rotation at the upper boot. There's a hinge on the foot. 
and a pivot as well and there he is with everything ported back on obviously the articulation will be just slightly hindered a bit with everything on but you know mostly he'll be standing around directing and telling people what to do so it would have been nice if they included a pointing hand but one of his other accessories was this skull which looks very good I like that. Unfortunately, there is no peg hole or anything in the bottom, so it's not like you can easily add it onto a body of some sort. But I do believe my man Wisman actually dremeled it out and was able to add it onto one of the uh, suited bodies. I guess I'll show that. He's also packed in with an additional fist for the left hand, so you can have two closed fists on either arm, which is cool. It would have been nice if they added in an additional open hand, but you know, it is what it is. Kind of wish his hands could hinge a bit more, but it is hindered a little bit by these gauntlets, I suppose. Yeah, I guess if you kind of pull the gauntlets up a little bit, you'll get just a bit more range of motion, but it's not the greatest. And his final accessory is a neutral head scope where, you know, his mouth is closed and he's looking menacing, he's looking mean and angry. And I'm so happy that they did include that. That is normally one of my issues with some of the builder figures or builder figure sized figures uh, is that, you know, they always have one particular head scope that only works in one particular type of display. But, you know, giving you the options for something neutral definitely gives you way more options for displaying. Now, I do have a little issue here on the side of the head. There seems to be some type of paint imperfection. Now, I don't know if that's something I could just kind of wipe off or what. Yeah, but that looks really bad. I don't like the way that looks at all. Aside from that, I didn't really have too many issues as far as uh, paint imperfections on this guy. Uh, I saw like maybe one or two little things down towards the boots. But for the most part, I think my version was pretty clean. And for the record, the uh, cloak ports in here on the shoulder pad. So if you want to do something that's uh, soft goods, then you may have to fit it with some type of port so to uh, fit there or be able to tuck it in under the back or something like that. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to do a little bit of light customization. All right, a few quick size comparisons and some swaps and we'll get up out of here. Here he is next to his builder figure counterpart. And you can see that the base buck sort of looks the same. I'm pretty sure it's the same base buck, but they did a few little variations here on the AOA version as far as the boots and the gauntlets, shoulder pads, added the cape, uh, you know, but you can definitely swap parts between the two. Unfortunately, the colors are not going to really match up. But the fact that we've gotten two apocalypse figures in such a short period of time is pretty impressive. Now we just got to go for the trifecta and get a big apocalypse, sort of like the Toy Biz build a figure version from back in the day, which I actually need to rebuild. I need to find the parts for mine. So yeah, there's the uh, Age of Apocalypse hand on the regular 616 Apocalypse's arm. So that does work. Again, the colors don't match up though. And the head can pop on there as well. It's a little loose. It's not exactly the same fit, but it is popped onto the peg. And like the colors don't really match up, but you could finesse this. This actually still looks fine in my opinion. And there's that extra part that we had got with the Deluxe uh, Archangel. This is actually my first time fitting the part onto the arm. Hopefully they'll do more stuff like this where you can actually have interchangeable parts that are packed in with other figures and get you to buy more and, you know, that little game that all the toy companies play. And this one can work too, but, you know, one of you customizers out there, if you wanted to paint these up to match, buy an extra Deluxe Apocalypse, and then you could. Same thing here, except I believe some of the figures in the Apocalypse the love spill the figure wave are kind of hard to get now I forget who comes with the head and there he is flanked by two of his lieutenants and these are probably the three best figures that we received from the AOA storyline so far the first wave was pretty good though. Sugar Man Builder figure is excellent. A really, really nice looking figure. Like I said, I do like the way Apocalypse came out and Dark Beast was my favorite regular figure in that first wave. So hopefully second wave, we'll get Magneto, we'll get Cyclops, we'll get a couple of the other really um, popular characters, maybe a Colossus. We'll see, you know, it's quite a few X-Men for them to go through, but this figure came out nice in my opinion. Not the greatest mobility, not the greatest range of motion, but he does look really cool next to the other characters here and I'm looking forward to more from the AOA story arc so this is one that I would definitely recommend that you pick up thanks for hanging out as always rate comment and subscribe hit the bell down there and until next time peace